Good morning, how you doing? It's time to start service this morning. I want everybody that's home to go ahead and stand up. Everybody that's here, go ahead and stand up. We're going to have a good time in the Lord today. Are you ready to worship God? We're going to do some new stuff today. It's going to be awesome. And of course, I'm going to do some old stuff because I am kind of getting there. So we're going to do Revelation. We're going back to Revelation. Uh, we're talking about the, the first part of the witnesses. So, getting God, well, not witnesses, but the martyrs. I'm sorry. The martyrs. Aren't you glad you're in God's house today? Somebody say amen. 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 All right. There we are. All right, everybody, I'll go ahead. Repeat after me. These are the two most important hours of my week. Help me to cherish them. I'm here today to worship, not to be entertained. I'm singing to an audience of one. Accept my worship, oh Lord. Give all that hand clap. Right. Don't get ready, because we're going we to really have some good time today. Yes, 
you've already dropped it, just hold your hand up. If you haven't, hold your offer up. Hold your hand up and or and or offer, but do it right now. Y'all say this out to me. I lift my offering to you. Let it please you, O oh Lord. This is my seed. I will release my hand. It will never leave my life. You will multiply. Accept my seed, O oh Lord. Give on that hand clap. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the time and opportunity to gather in your house and to be amongst our people, Lord God, as we gather in one mind and one accord, accord with us, ask that your presence would be here, touching and ministering into each and every situation. Be with us in this service, Lord God, and let your hand move in such a way that testimony would be given, Lord God, that we were in the presence of God today and that you worked and not only in this service today, but in our lives individually. Lord, you heard the needs. Lord, we saw the hands. And Father, we just ask you to minister and bless and supply according to your riches and your glory. Father, we'll be sure to give you praise and honor for it all. In Christ Jesus' name, the church. Amen.
I've been instructed to stay on this side so you don't trip over the cords, and it will all get a big laugh. Except for DC when his equipment goes up in flames. Isn't God good? Oh, my God. I'm telling you something. God is able. God is good. God is taking care of us. We can trust him no matter what. Amen. That's all he has to Come on, DC. Come on. I think you might be going through something. God, I know you are going through something today. But guess what? God is greater than whatever you're going through. Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> Get your Bible out in Revelation. <laughs> Revelation chapter 6. We're, getting, we're moving on through it right now. And that's really, 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 really awesome that we're getting through it right now because we're getting ready to get into some tough stuff. And what is amazing to me is how history now, modern history right now, is this thing up? Praise God. Check, check, check. Am I on? I'm not on. Okay, let's try it again then. Check, 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 check. Am I on now? Did you see that little? Is it on? Oh, it's on here. So did you see that? Where's Eddie at? Eddie has the spirit of Beth and I can never find him in the need. I told you Eddie and Bethany had to be kin to each other. I would trip over Bethany all the time until I needed her and then she'd be gone. You got her now? Check, 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 check. Is it on now? Keep Okay, keep trying. Oh, there we go. There we are. Try it. Oh, there we go. There we are. So now y'all know that was Jordan singing, not me, because I didn't have a mic. Okay, here we go. Revelation chapter 6. We can look as history unfolds in our very eyes right now, what we see going on. And what we see here is honestly, uh, to those, and again, I got to say it, for those that believe mid trib, they believe that we're in the tribulation period. For those that believe post-trib or a-trib, which means after the seven years or not even at all after the seven years, Jesus is just going to come back. Uh, they all say that we're in the middle of it right now. But the pre-tribbers like me, I believe this is just conditioning. We're being conditioned for what's coming. Because I say that because, number one, the church is still here. It's the restraining force. And number two, the Antichrist has not been revealed He's here, but he's not been revealed. So when he's revealed and the Jews flock to him and there's a peace treaty made, then we're going to know that's what that's when we know the tribulation period starting. There's a seven-year deal, and we haven't seen any of that yet. So I know that it's getting close, but but no cigar yet. We're being conditioned. Look at somebody said we're being conditioned. Amen. Amen. So uh, you got your Bible, say amen. Turn to the book of Revelation, chapter 6. I'm just going to read a little bit of it while you're standing. Then I'm going to read some more when it comes up on the comes up here. We're talking about Revelation. Well, we were warned the end of days are coming, and they are here. That this is not well. My granddaddy used to say it. We've been hearing it for thousands of years, and not no, it's here. Plain and simple, it's here. Okay, so Revelation, and we're just. Uh, We'll just read the first couple of verses and then, then we'll pray. And when he had opened the fifth seal, verse 9, I saw one of the altar, the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, hold in true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Stretch forth your hands this way. Father, we love you, Lord. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We know, God, that you are alive and well and that you are walking this earth right now. We know, God, that you're in this service right now. And we know, God, that you've got control and you've got command. And we trust you for all that you're doing for us today. <clears throat> Help us, God, illuminate our minds. Help us to see. Help us to know. Help us to understand. And we thank you. That you've given us your word as a road map so we don't have to fear what is coming on. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, Amen. Look at smile on the way down and tell them the past is behind us. The future is ahead of us. God is with us. And nothing, and nothing, and nothing shall be impossible. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. You can be seated. I was looking uh, last night and, and it, it, I just loved it so much. This was actually. Uh, well, this is an oldie but goldie, a very oldie but goldie, but I loved it so much I thought I'd better do it again while, while, while I felt like the oldie. I, I'm an oldie but goldie. Amen? 
There's a few of you in here that's oldies but goldies. <laughs> okay, I'm an oldie but silver. All right. Uh, helpful life hacks. Don't you like to look, you see, you know, uh, all the time you need to see these helpful life hacks. And you can try them, and they really, really seem to really help at times. You know, like how to use certain kind of, of bottle caps and how to, to, to pour Kool-Aid in your toilet to find leaks in your toilet, all kinds of stuff. I see all kinds of hacks. Well, I got just six, actually, right now. Uh, number one, are you clumsy? How many here are clumsy? Okay. If you're clumsy, avoid cutting yourself while slicing vegetables by getting someone else to hold them while you chop. <laughs> Okay, I see. <laughs> I see that. I see where this is going. Okay. Number two, high blood pressure sufferers. Simply cut yourself and bleed for a while, thus reducing the pressure in your veins. You don't like that one either. Okay. This is going bad fast. Okay. This is going south. All right. Number three, a mouse trap placed on the top of your alarm clock will prevent you from rolling over and going back to sleep when you hit the snooze button. <laughs> That's a good one, yeah. Number four. <laughs> this is my favorite. Number four, if you have a bad cough, everybody ever had a bad cough? If you have a bad cough, take a large dose of laxatives. Then you'll be afraid to cough. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was going to get it, yeah. And I saw this one on major pain. You got a bad toothache? Hit your thumb with a hammer. Then you will forget all about the toothache. <laughs> and most of all, most helpful of all is don't try any of these above hacks. <laughs> all right, so here we go. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna go back to what we were just doing, what we were reading. I'm gonna read it again. It's up here, you can see it. Uh, and when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Now that's, now we're not even getting that far today. We're going to, it's going to be a, a two-weaker, but we're going to get there. It's like week is in W-E-A-K, but a two-weaker is W-E-E-K. All right? Uh, and, white, and white robes were given unto every one of them, and it said unto them that they should rest for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. Wow. In other words, you, you, you're, you're having a hard time because you're being killed. <laughs> and then God says, you got to wait because there's more death coming. Huh. Kind of a tough pill to swallow, isn't it? And let me tell you how you're going to, let me tell you how the people are going to die. The martyrs. This is martyrs, those that were killed for the witness of Jesus Christ. Uh, let me show you how martyrs during the seven year tribulation are going to die. And I saw thrones, and then it said on it, the judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which worship not the beast, nor his image, nor received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, that they lived in the reign of Christ for a thousand years. You say, well, it doesn't even make sense. Beheaded? Well, it didn't make sense about maybe 20 years ago, but now it makes a lot of sense because there's been a lot of beheading uh, in the last decade or so. Okay? So so when the, the, the martyrs, when they die, it's going to be, it's not going to be uh, uh, like you think it may be. That you're going to be beheaded for your witness for Jesus Christ. And so now, Matthew 24, let me get in my Bible. Matthew 24, 3 through 8. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, what shall these things when or when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming at the end of the world? In other words, what's the last chapter before you come back? I could even put it up there, the last chapter. He says and Jesus answered him, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. 
See that you not be troubled, for all these things must come to pass. See, there's the white horse first, then the red horse. Let's come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. Okay, there's the black horse. And there shall be famine and pestilences, and earthquakes in divers places. That's the pale horse. This is the last chapter of earth as we know it. And then he says, all of these, all of these that you just read, they're just the beginning. It's going to be even worse than you ever could imagine. So now remember, remember watch this. It shows the results of the fury of the four seals. He had, um, these seals have been unleashed upon the earth. And now, after the four horsemen have arrived, the tents seen now, she has, remember it was in heaven, and it went to earth, and there was the four horses. And now God again redirects our path. And instead of looking on earth, now we're going to look up in heaven again. So now we're looking up in heaven. And what, what, what is he even picturing here? What is he seeing? He looks up and he sees these guys in white robes under the altar. This is a picture, not of us. The church is gone. It's not the church. Tribulation is not for the church. We have enough of it now. Tribulation is to bring the Jews back to Christ and to reclaim the earth, the title deed of back to the earth. So here's a picture of tribulation, saints. I'm going to tell you, if you miss the rapture, then you may be. In this crowd. He said, man, you're trying to scare me, aren't you? Please don't get it wrong. Don't take it wrong. I'm getting to say, I hope I scare the hell out of you. It shows a promise. The promise is people will be saved during the tribulation. But remember, the church, which is the, invite, or the Holy Spirit is invited into church. And the Bible tells us, we'll talk about it in a minute, that the church is going to be taken out of the way. So the Holy Spirit now is poured out without measure, is going to be out of the way, and it's going to be like the Old Testament, just drops and sprinkles of the Holy Spirit. So now, with this now, watch this. The promise is there's going to be people say, well, okay, now you tell me if I miss it, I can still be saved. Yes, you can. But guess how? We just read it. You got to give your life. Now, right now, as we speak, the only thing God requires of us is to accept His freely given salvation, the blood on the cross. That's all, that's it. And all it requires is that we die to self. But once the rapture is taking place and the seven-year tribulation is going, now you're going to have to do more than just die to self. You're literally going to have to die. I read it to you. I'm not making it up. I'm not trying to trying to sound like, you know, what I read it to you. Those that were seen were the tribulation saints that were beheaded for the testimony. Of Jesus Christ. So, so watch this now. Not only is there a promise, and not only is there a price with these tribulation saints. So let me, let me. I'm not, I'm not I'm going to get too deep into it today. I'm going to get deep, but I'm not going to get deep into this verse because I want to stop and take our time. Do you know we've been going through Revelation now since last fall, and we've just got to chapter six. We've been taking our time. So you can always say, you know what? One thing for sure, we didn't leave any stones unturned. Amen? So now, watch this. The tribulation saints also show us a proclamation. Get ready. If this is one of your beliefs, I'm getting ready to mess up your cornflakes. <laughs> Country folk, you know what I'm talking about. Ready? 
You ready? When I moved and pastored in Benson, one of the biggest churches, denominations around, I won't even say the denomination, but this denomination, they believed in salvation through Christ. Just like us, except for this one thing. They taught soul sleep. And because they taught soul sleep, whenever we'd have a funeral together, <laughs> and especially when I'm standing up in one of their churches that teach soul sleep, I really aggravated some people. I, I actually believe, it, believe this now. One night, this, this is such an awesome story. One night, I was in Boss Hogs. And the biggest man I think I had ever seen stood beside me to get some chicken. I said, I better get some before he gets it. I mean, I looked over at him, and he was wearing a conservative shirt, so I knew I could pick on him. I'd have picked on him anyway, but I knew I could and not be killed. I looked at him and said, dude, I think you're about the biggest man i ever seen. If you played football, you'd have four numbers across your chest. Linda looked at me and said, you're going to get killed, son. And he said, <laughs> he said, oh, oh sir, oh, I did. I played for the New York Jets. And I said, wow. And he said, and I forget the other place he played for. It was two places he played for. I said, that had to be fun, huh? He said, yeah, but it's not my having any fun right now. I'm retired from football. And he said, he said, my mama, who is a preacher, is in the nursing home across the way and said it's sad because nobody's there but just her. That's it. No visits, no nothing. She's just there. And he said, it's me and my sister. And so I asked, where was his mother at? What was her name? And so when we got through eating, I got in the car, went over there, and I walked in the room, and there he was with his sister and his mother, who was a preacher. And I prayed with them, and I tried to offer some encouragement. And when I did, the man said, can I get your number? And we got talking. He wound up, and matter of fact, before it's all over with, he's on Mighty Army, and he still talks to me uh, about once a month. And so... Uh, a couple of days later, he texts me and says, Mom died. I said, I'm so sorry. And I said, what can I do to help you, bro? He says, can you preach your funeral? And it was all the way down to Cresswell. I said, uh, sure. He said, they've got the nursing home preacher, but I want somebody that's encouraging. And I've heard everything, and I really like the way you talk, so can you come do a funeral? So I go in there. And I start talking about you're with God. You step right over into glory. Start talking about all this stuff about you never lost consciousness. All this stuff. The preacher that come up after me believed in soul sleep. And the preacher come up behind me and said, don't listen to anything he said. In a funeral. He said, your mama's sleeping in the ground. And said, one day, if she was right, she'll be taken up into heaven. But right now, she don't know what's going on. She has no idea because she's asleep and he's wrong. And after the funeral, I went to shake her hand. She wouldn't even shake my hand. She got mad at me because I wouldn't teach on soul sleep. That didn't happen in Benson because Benson, those guys would just say, okay, we know you're a little short hit. We know you're a little short minded because you church of God. We know you ain't got it all there. So we'll let you slide, but that woman didn't. And I thought about that. Do you realize this shows us there is no soul sleep? Amen? Watch this. Oh, let me get up. Let's see. Well, get up back. Come on, get over this way. This way. Get ready. Watch this. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians. Chapter 5, verse 8, we are confident, I say, and this is what he used at the funeral, willing, rather, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. 
That means as soon as my breath leaves my body, I'm in the presence of an almighty God. When Bethany died, she took her last breath. Here, in one more hill or whatever that's called. There's another hill to climb. She took her last breath in the last course, so one more hill to climb. She took her last breath of earth's air. But when she exhaled, when she inhaled, she I'm, I'm just pretty sure she heard amazing grace as she was led to the Father. Never lost consciousness. I believe that with all my heart. Now, what about this scripture? 1 Thessalonians 4.14 For we believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again, even so them which also sleep in Jesus, meaning they died in Jesus, will God bring with him. When the rapture takes place, God's going to bring the souls of those that have already died. He's going to bring them with him. Why is he going to bring them with him? Because something amazing is going to happen. That did in Christ, are going to rise first, and then those which are alive remain. Somebody even told me, I had a guy tell me one time, said, you know, my church will be the first one to rise in the rapture. I said, dude, come on now, how do you know that? He said, it's scriptural. I said, how is it so scriptural? He said, the Bible said the dead in Christ shall rise, church, and rise first. He said, I got the deadest church in town. <laughs> the Bible says, we're not all going to sleep, or we're not all going to die, but we're all going to be changed. And so what happens is when somebody dies, their body goes to the ground, but their soul goes to God. And when the rapture takes place, their soul comes back. There And, and uh, those that are dead, they come out of the ground. Their souls come out of the ground. And we that are alive, we all wind up in the middle of the air changed. We get our glorified bodies right then. That's why they're coming back. That's why we're going up to get our glorified bodies. I'm here to tell you, you can believe it or not, the Bible clearly says we never, ever sleep. That is nothing but death, and that's the body because we're always alive in Christ. I thank God that we're always, always alive in Christ. Give the Lord a hand clap for us. We're alive in Christ. Amen. So now, so first we're going to get rid of soul sleep. There's no, there, honestly, if you want to believe it, that's fine, because I'm not going to argue with you, but it, but it sounded like it, but I wasn't. <laughs> All right, and number two, purgatory. Early on, the church was competing with the heathens. And so in order to compete with the heathens, the church was losing people to the heathens, to the heathen religion. The heathen spirituality. The heathens were teaching that there was a place where you went and you atoned for your sins and then you went to wherever that place was, uh, the utopia that they had. And so the church decided, well, we can do better than that. And so they decided to talk about purgatory. Purgatory is a place where you go to pay. For you're seeing it was DC one time was sitting with me at church, and and <laughs> and I said they were talking about matrimony, and I said DC, do you know what they're talking about with matrimony? He says, yeah, Dad, that's the place where you go to atone for your sin. <laughs> when you die, it's already decided. Luke chapter sixteen nineteen was not a parable; it was a fact. He said there was a certain man who lived sumptuously every day. He had everything he wanted. And then Lazarus was a poor man. Said, said that, that his, that, matter of fact, he even named his dog. He had, you know, you know what Lazarus' dog was? His name was Moreover. The Bible said that Moreover the dog licked his wounds. <laughs> okay, I'm going down fast. I'm going to leave it alone. Listen carefully. The Bible said that Lazarus died and was carried, escorted into the presence of God into Abraham's bosom. And the Bible said the rich man died and woke up in hell. 
And there was a great gulf between them. And listen carefully. The reason the great gulf was there before, listen, please hear me all the way out. Before the crucifixion, listen carefully. Before the crucifixion, nobody could stand in the presence of God because the blood had not been shed. So before the crucifixion, when the person died, everybody went to Hades, the abode of the dead. But there was a great gulf between it. Those that died righteously were in Abraham's bosom. Those that died unrighteously were in hell. There was two compartments, upper Sheol, lower Sheol. It was called Sheol. All right. And so after Jesus, when Jesus died and said he went into the earth and preached to the saints that were held captive, those that died in him, he said, I'm here to show you who I'm the one you believed in. I'm the one you trusted in. And he showed those in lower Sheol, this is the reason that you're here because you did not believe me. You did not trust me. And the Bible says he led captivity captive. He took those in upper Sheol and he carried them into heaven. And the Bible says that hell enlarged itself. So now, don't think there's a purgatory. So just in case you didn't get it right the first time, when you die, you can straighten it out then because that's not going to happen. There's only two categories of people on this earth. That's the saints and the ain'ts. And when you die, if you're a saint, now because the blood of Christ was shed, we go to heaven. If you're an ain't, you know where you go. Okay, so let's go. I know this is some tough stuff, and I, I understand. And it's got to chew on it for a while. But if you come see me, we'll talk about it. I don't, I don't ever mind talking about this stuff. I love talking about it. So just bring, bring it on. We'll talk about it. So now. It said, now watch this now, we're talking about the, the, the place, or we're talking about the cutting down uh, soul sleep and cutting down purgatory. Let's watch these guys. These guys, their position, these martyrs, their position was, first off, it was a place of sacrifice. The Bible said very clearly and distinctly that they were slain. Slain for their witness. Supposedly this really happened. I believe it was in New York. Some armed men came in with guns in the middle of a service and told everybody to sit down. And they were going to rob them. After they robbed the church, they said, okay, and they had guns. They said, anybody that's not willing to die for Christ leave and they said about half of the congregation left some of the pastors there were many pastors in this church some of the pastors and the ministers left part of the choir left the church looked kind of like a ghost town after he said who's not whoever's not willing to die for christ leave and after everybody left the robbers looked at who was left and said okay the hypocrites are gone now y'all have church I'd hate for that to be here. Anywhere. Period. But over on the other side of the tribulation, that word slain means to be sacrificed. Wow. The Bible says, and I'm going to go into a little further in a minute, it just says, the rest of the blood pour out at the base of the altar. In other words, when you make your sacrifice, you take all the blood from the lamb when you're making your sacrifice. But after you sprinkle the blood on the horns and put it wherever, then you put the rest of it at the bottom of the altar. And I'm going to talk about that uh, in just a minute. Let me just, I'm trying to keep it slow and keep it easy, okay? And I'm trying to, I mean, you can see how, how, how if you didn't stop and look at all of this, we could have just read right through all of this and kept on going. And we've never known all this, okay? The story of redemption has always been written in the blood of martyrs. I just got a few 
just a few. Many have sought to destroy the Jews, Pharaoh, Haman, Herod, and Hitler. From the Old Testament to Revelation, Satan has attacked the people of God. Why has he attacked the people of God? Satan desires worship. Satan, if you look in Ezekiel uh, uh, 28, you'll see that it talks about his pipes that he led or was somehow how connected with worship in heaven. He desires worship. And those that serve God with all their heart refuse to worship Satan. And so because we refuse to worship him, he comes at us. But not only does he desire our worship, he desires our place. When it's all over with, we're going to be in a place of safety, in a place of awesomeness, and he's going to be baking in a lake. D.C. did not know what I was preaching on today. I didn't know what he was playing. He sent me the stuff, and I wrote it down. And when he wrote it down, it still didn't click. Because I was looking at one song, and I missed out on even, even if. I'm doing a funeral this afternoon at 3 o'clock. And here's how I'm going to end it. A couple of hundred years ago, A lawyer, Christian lawyer, did very well for himself. He had four daughters and one son. God was blessing him. His son got sick and died. So now he had with his wife, his children. And his business and his housing. The Chicago fire went through and he lost everything. So he tells his wife, We need to recoup. We need to get back, get our, get our whim back. So I'm going to send you to England. And when I send you to England, I'm going to send you and the girls. I'm going to finish up some loose ends here and I'm going to join you. So he puts them on the ship. And while he's working on loose ends one night, he gets a telegram. The telegram was from his wife. It said, all was lost. Only I remain. The ship that they were on sank. All of his daughters died. They drowned. And everything he owned was destroyed. Just his wife was left. So he gets on a ship, and he rides to go meet her to comfort her. And he asks the captain, he says, will you do me a favor? He says, yes, sir, I will. He said, can you let me know, wake me up when we come to the place where I lost my precious daughters? He said, I sure will. The captain went and woke him up and said, here's where your daughters ran. And he stood on the edge of the boat. Asking God why. He already lost his son. Now he's lost his daughters. He lost his business. He's lost everything. And God begins to speak to him. And he wrote it down. And it wound up not only blessing him, but thousands upon thousands upon thousands. For he says, even though things have gone crazy, it is well with my soul. Wow. That song, we just sang a little bit of it. I'm going to just talk about it today at the funeral. It is well with my soul. God still got this. Let me tell you something. You know how many Jews, Hitler was probably the greatest of all. 
Hitler, when he unleashed his power on the Jews, not including his own people, but on the Jews, he killed six million Jews. At the height of his holocaust, the genocide, he killed 15,000 Jews a day. Not a month, a day. Wow. History tells us that after World War II, there was less Jews than came out of Egypt and crossed the Red Sea. The Moses. Wow. Satan hates anybody. It's got a promise from God. So now, I want you just to watch this little bit. I want to, I want to build on just a little bit more, and then I'm gonna then I'm gonna close. Just stop and look at that for a minute. Just look at it. Revelation chapter 20 said, these are the one that were beheaded for their testimony. Tribulation is not going to be a picnic. And for those left behind, they realize what's going on. That are ministered to by the 144,000 Jewish evangelists. It's not going to be a picnic. Because when they find you, six million Jews, and that's going to be small scale compared to the tribulation. You know how it is overseas now, over in Afghanistan, all those other places to say, you can go there and try to stop it, but they've been fighting all these years, and all they know is bloodshed, bloodshed, bloodshed. But you know what? During the tribulation, the entire world is going to be engulfed by it. And during tribulation, it's going to be a bloodbath. That's why I'm trying so hard right now to stop, take our time, and look at this. This isn't a joke. This isn't... You know, uh, when you after the rapture, God says, Oh, I didn't mean it. Y'all come on. No. Once you hear that rapture trumpet, if you still hear when the rapture trumpet takes place, know this. In order to make it into heaven. If that don't wake you up, I'm almost through. Somebody said, please hurry up. <laughs> Go back to the sacrifice. There's a place of sacrifice, of course. What were they sacrificed for? For the Word of God and for their testimony. In other words, what they said and what they did. Free speech is going out the window very quickly. Say what you will. Free speech is dying. There's only certain speeches allowed. Not free speech. But can you imagine once the Antichrist is in control and the church is out of the way. If you preach it. Or you live it. You're out of here. It only was a place of sacrifice. See the souls under the altar in heaven. It was a place of safety. Why was it a place of safety? Because now they're in heaven. And they're under the altar. Remember Leviticus 4 and 7 says the blood of the sacrificial bulls was poured out 
at the base of the altar. When you see the souls of these martyr people in Jesus Christ, they have given every penny. Now let me ask you a question. If they have to give everything to be there, why can't we give of ourselves and everything? It's coming so fast. It's coming. DC, come up here and get replaced there. It's coming so fast. Every day, pick up the paper, turn on the news. The conditioning is already here. If you're mid trib, post trib, a trib, we you you believe we're in the tribulation, but I don't believe that because I believe it ain't got tough enough yet. Talk about that next week. Thank you. 
Buddha. Because it does have a lot of doom and gloom in it. But even in the doom and the gloom, we see that God's people still win. It's just the magnitude of what you have to do. Let 
me and God are where we need to be together. Nobody looking around, every eye closed. It's not me and your back today, it just means that I want to get closer. I don't want to even have to worry about this stuff you're talking about. I want to go out in the first load. Hey, if I'm talking to you, but nobody's looking around, you just put that hand up. And say, I want to make sure I'm right. Bless them, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Bless them. Bless them. Now we're all going to pray together. Y'all pray with me. We've been doing it every week, and that's okay. We'll do it every week until, until Jesus comes back. We'll be fine. Lord, y'all repeat after me. Lord, I love you. And I thank you for your sacrifice for me. I thank you that I don't have to give my life to be saved. All I've got to do is ask. I also thank you, God, that if I want to get closer, all I've got to do is ask. I'm asking right now, Lord, help me during all this is going on this conditioning to be ready for what's coming. And if the time should come that it demands my life, help me be ready to do so in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for it right now. Give the Lord a hand clap. God, even in tribulation, God is still God. God is still in control. That's why we got the book. So when it looks like everything's gone out of control, know that God still has his finger on things. I tell y'all God's looking good today. Well, most of you are anyway. <laughs> Y'all ready? God's good. Uh, Go ahead and dismiss some prayer, please. That's right. God's heaven is a place on the field set by the house today.